In the previous video, we solved this double integral using a Jacobian, which was basically a multivariable change of variables. I'd like to show you what this uh, mapping from one space to another actually looks like using this fantastic free program for Windows called Winplot. So what we'll do is we'll open up Winplot. We'll go to Window, Mapping, XY Plane. And that will bring up two windows. One will be the domain. The other will be the range. The range is clearly labeled, so this is the domain. And what we want to do is we want to view axes, first of all, so that we have some idea of what our axes are. And over here, we'll go to view, oh, sorry, we'll go to view axes and do the same thing. And you can see this is XY, and this is labeled as UV space, right? Now we actually have to input our mapping. So we click on map, new, and then we just type in whatever our mapping happens to be. In this case, u equals x plus y, v equals x minus y, so we'll just type that in, u equals x plus y, and v equals x minus y. We'll click OK, and now we will see what our mapping actually looks like. But that's not quite the full story. What we want to do is see what these bounds look like. So we're going to take x plus y equals 1, x plus y equals 4, all these four equations, plot them in our xy plane, and this mapping tool will automatically translate them into what they look like in uv space. And to do that, it's pretty easy. We just click equation, implicit. We can do explicit if you want. It's just easier to type in x plus y equal 1, equals 1. Click OK. There's the first one. Then we'll click Equation, Implicit, and we'll do this again for all the others. x plus y equals 4. Uh, I'm going to press F3 because that's the keyboard shortcut. Equation, Implicit is F3. Uh, we'll do x minus y equals 1. I'll press F3, x minus y equals negative 1, and I'll click OK. And now I can see that this is exactly what we had before. There are the four uh, lines they intersect to form this uh, square, this rectangular region, and that's translated to this much easier to define rectangular region over here. If I press page up, I can zoom in, although there is kind of a weird bug. If I zoom in too far, yeah, see that, how I lost that line at negative one? I'm not sure why that's the case, but it is, and also if I press the arrow keys, I'll end up losing it too. But anyway, that's what's going on. I get these four lines, and our transformation transforms them into these four. And if we compare that with the picture that we drew, you'll find that they're very much the same. So let's look at wind plot one more time. So there's the picture that we drew, and we get this. There's the output, and there's the same region. Pretty nice. Okay. Now, in general, a linear transformation is, is uh, even a bit more than this is a specific example of a linear transformation. So if I pull up this program called Linear, which is a free download uh, for all um, operating systems, and I'll go to File, I'm sorry, Edit New Matrix, or just press the New Matrix button. Remembering that the matrix is 2 by 2, and it was defined by 1, 1, 1, negative 1. That's the matrix of the transformation. I can go to Operations, Invert, and you'll see that I'll get exactly uh, what we got before. And now what I can do is I can go to the first matrix, the matrix of our transformation, go to Graphics and Linear Transformation Viewer, and it will bring up this. You might say, well, there's really nothing much here. What are we looking at? There's our matrix. We don't want to really look at linear combinations right now. The span is pretty important. And again, this is a linear algebra concept, but this picture should look familiar. It's, it's very similar to what we were looking at before. It takes everything and rotates it and kind of shrinks all the little boxes down a bit. But we can do more than that. We can look at the transformation of a particular object. So we'll click the Object tab. I'm going to click New Object. And then I'll do a square, say, side length 1 with lower x and lower left x. Uh, at zero, 0, and I'll draw that, and I'll have to zoom in just a little bit. Oh, here we go, sorry. So you can see our original square and 
the transformation of the square. Right? The original square and its rotated transformation. I'm not limited to just squares, though. I can also transform things like circles. You can see our original circle is scaled a little bit and rotated as well. Uh, we can do um, equations if we like. Now this we have to type y equals f of x, so you know, uh, minus x plus 1, say. And there we'll see the original in red and the transformed one in blue. So it's a pretty nice way to visualize what's actually going on. Now if I close this and I create a new matrix, uh, 2 by 2, A, B, C, and D. Linear is pretty nice. Operations, oh, it won't let me invert it. I can actually go to linear transformation for A, B, C, D. And I can view the span of the columns. Hmm. That's interesting. Oh, right. I have to go to my matrix. Everything is set to zero. Go to my matrix tab, and now I can mess around with these sliders. And you can see now how changing this matrix around changes its its image. This is the standard, you know, Euclidean grid after applying this transformation. I can shear it. I can uh, slide it back and forth. Well, shearing is really all I'm limited to and I can flip it around if I make certain constants negative. And again, objects, view new object, a square, and you can see how, if I go back to matrix, the image of that square will change as I change uh, the numbers in the matrix. It's a pretty useful tool. And again, I can do transformation, I'm sorry, objects, and I can do f of x, and there I'll do like negative x plus 1. And as I go and change these, you'll see how the image changes as I change the numbers in the matrix. So this is what you're doing with a linear transformation. You're, you're effectively stretching this grid, um, keeping the origin fixed. So have fun with this. Download linear, download winplot, explore linear transformations. Um, I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. All right, take care.